Hey guys, it's me, Rebecca. So this is gonna be the start of another vlog. And in this one, I am gonna be reading the oldest book on my TBR. And that doesn't mean the oldest book in a sense, like the oldest of it being published. I mean, the oldest, in, it's, it's been on my TBR the longest, so yeah. And that book would be The Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton. This is the naked hardback, as I do take off the dust jacket. This is what the cover looks like. And this one follows in modern day this archivist in London named LD. And, and she finds this old leather satchel containing two items an old sketchbook belonging to this kind of this artist who he was successful and was gonna make a name of himself until his fiance died and then he kind of like disappeared or isolated himself from like social life and as well a photograph of this woman and it intrigues her about the story behind these items of hers and for some reason it, she's almost protective of both items and she doesn't want anyone to see them and for some reason the house in the sketchbook she finds it's familiar to her she thinks it's like a, a story her mother used to tell her when she was a little girl and she's wondering who this woman in the photograph is because she doesn't even think it's the man's fiance so yeah and we also follow this other timeline in about 150 years in the past of this woman it's like she died and is like haunting this house and yeah like she was shot dead <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's two timelines and both are kind of similar in the sense they did lose a parent in, in the woman's case from like 150 years prior she lost both parents her mother did die and her father went to america and left her behind and with LED, her mother did die and she does have a father still so <laughs> yeah so far i'm intrigued i do like um the talk on how we get history from objects, but also we alter our history by kind of keeping objects that we want people to remember us by. Like, I just find the whole talk of how we can find someone's story by what they kept in their possession. Like, I just find that interesting. So, yeah, so far I am liking it, and yeah. <laughs>
don't know, I'm not really connected to the characters, like, uh, with the timeline in the past, sorry, I got a notification. If the timeline from a hundred or so years ago of the girl, she, she kind of gave us this narrative of this girl who was kind of involved, but not really, like, I just didn't care for that narrative, like, I just didn't really see the connection, so... But that was quite, uh, like, almost like 40-ish pages, and that's not my fave, so... Yeah, but so far, it's not a bad novel, and... Yeah, it does intrigue, like, it seems like... It seems like, uh... With... With Elodie, uh, kind of discovering the sketchbook and the drawings, like... So, it seems to be kind of, like... Megan, uh, I guess Lily, her name is, I, I'm, I don't know why I'm blanking out, but it seems to be kind of like, have, allowing her to feel more connected to our world, even though I'm pretty sure she is a ghost, so that is interesting, like, people remembering, kind of, we, people remembering our story kind of allows us to be reconnected to the world, like, I do like that, so yeah. So far, it's, it's fine, but yeah. So, it's the next day, and I have done some reading of, of the clockmaker, clockmaker's daughter. And now I'm on page 262, and I think I'm starting to like it a bit more. And I think I'm kind of understanding the different uh, stories that's being added to the narrative. Even though they don't seem very uh, relevant to the very overall story, like we each have a story, and over time our story is gonna be forgotten, and like when we die, if they don't seem memorable enough, and it's just like uh, Lily's recounting the stories of the people who've, sorry, who've uh, stayed in this manner. In order for in order for them to live on, even after the person died or she no longer she she doesn't know uh, their story after they leave the manor really. It is seems like I'm thinking that's what's happening with a narrative we did get is now uh, Leonard. He has. His story involves uh, before his stay in the manor. He was a soldier in a war, I'm assuming World War One, and you know that's being told to us. Uh, I'm not sure if it's like if he has nightmares or does. Oh, but yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But yeah, I'm kind of liking a bit more. Who? I'm still thinking it's a sweet story. Like it's just fine. Like, I do like the quotes in here. There's so many that's like interesting about stories. How we alter our stories so they they show us in a better light how how we see things, what we believe in affect the story. Uh, there was a quote on. Page two fifty that I liked, and it ended with the truth depends on who it is that's telling the story, and with everyone's like perspective or their real point, like they believe their truth is the true story, the actual uh, accurate tale. So yeah, there I am like in that kind of stuff. And yeah, that's all for now. <laughs> And otherwise, I've not really done much today. I've done some cleaning and I did do some grocery shopping, so yeah. So it's the next day and I completely forgot to update this vlog until now. I did film because I did film a part of my February wrap up because. But anyway, I have done some more reading and now I'm on page two, 320 of The Clockmaker's Daughter and 
It's still fine. I think my expectations for the story was different because I was expecting to be following Elodie or, or however you pronounce her name and she's trying to find out more about this mysterious woman or not. But so far uh, Lily, Lily is telling us uh, stories of other people who've stayed in that house and one of well not telling us but <clears throat> we're being told of stories of other people who've stayed in the house well the ghost of Lily's been there so yeah I still don't really see the correlation between all of these stories like I don't see how they're connected to one another so yeah and I still am intrigued about like what it what it is about this house because we have the latest POV we got which is like um I think it's like the great grandmother or something like that. the sort of to Elodie of uh, uh she meant she and her family stayed in this house during World War Two when London was like bombed, I don't know. And something about this house and she remembers that when she was on her honeymoon with her husband, something about this house was intriguing to her, like one day to pull her in was like bring in life out of her. Like, not in make it for you, but like inspiring her in a way. I don't know. But yeah, I'm intrigued about that if all of these stories will come together with this house. I'm not sure but yeah, so far it's fine. <coughs> and yeah. yeah. I don't know, that's I don't have anything else to say with this one. And yeah, I've not really done much today besides film as I already mentioned. And I don't know about tomorrow, I'm pretty sure I'm staying home tomorrow, so yeah. I'll see you and I see you. So it's the next day and I have done some more reading of The Clockmaker's Daughter <clears throat> and now I'm on part 3 which is page 380 and it's still fine. I think the story's not blowing me away and I'm not really feeling connected to the characters or the events. Like, it's fine. Like I do have a hundred pages left, so now something happens in this last bit. It's gonna be a three star, so yeah. But anyway, I am we are now seeing the connection between Edward and James Dutton, um the guy who Elodie's doing the working for the archive of uh, James was an old friend, a childhood friend of Lily and somehow Edward found him more. So yeah. And we are seeing the connection for Elodie and Tip with Jack and all of this. So yeah, it looks like it's, I don't know you know about the title because uh, it just seems like Lily's just haunting this house. It, it seems like the ha uh, how the central focus is on this house. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. That seems like Lily's just telling us the stories to kind of like connect everything. It seems like I, I don't know. I still don't fully understand unless like things are going over my head, which high likely it is, but. Yeah, I we are at a point where we see what happened that summer of back in 1862 where everything fell apart it seems like so we might begin the story of the death of Francis Edwards like the, what happened with Lily because it seems like she like, died in this house I'm not entirely sure so yeah but otherwise today I've not really done much this I don't know, I've just not really done much today, so yeah. So it's the next day and I have done some more reading of of the clockmaker's daughter. Now I'm on page four hundred forty six. 
Meaning I put less than 40 pages before I finish. And I'm definitely going to finish this book tomorrow. That's because I'm not really going to read it anymore today. Yeah. Um, from what I read yesterday, so I want to mention, um, in the present day, uh, Elodie, when she goes to the house, she does meet Jack and I don't know, they, like they're drawn to each other from, I don't know, it's a bit too fast, too instant, like they just met and they're drawn to each other, like I guess I just don't really know like what it feels like, I, I'm not someone who really believes I love at first sight, but so yeah, I wasn't a fan of that, but we did uh, know more of what happened that night in 1862 and how everything fell apart for Edward, for Lily, for everyone. Like, like it should be heartbreaking, heartbreaking, but I don't know if I was just tired when I was reading it or what. I just didn't really care. Like, like I feel bad for what happened, but yeah, we just didn't, we got some. It does it like we didn't get a full picture of like what actually happened like because we're being told from uh, Lily's perspective then of that one like she was hidden and she heard the sounds and the gunshots and yeah we get an idea but I don't think we get a full picture right now but yeah this book is gonna basically star for me unfortunately like if this wasn't my cup of tea, like I thought I might like it because I was intrigued by the plot and I do like historical fiction, but yeah, unless every book can work for everyone, you know, like maybe this book will work for someone else, who knows. We will see because this is going to go in a free little library when I'm able to, so yeah. And otherwise today I just run some errands and whatnot, so nothing interesting. And as I've mentioned a thousand times, I don't film when I'm driving and yeah. So I'll see you tomorrow when I give you my final update and I close out this vlog. So it is later the same day. I wasn't expecting to finish uh, The Clockmaker's Daughter but I just finished it and I'm currently in my bedroom because it's about 6pm and it's getting dark and I just didn't want to film this final update in total pitch blackness that is my living room so yeah but overall this book is a three star like I did kind of see the connection between all of the stories being told in a sense like they're all related to the house this is I suspected and to Lily who we do learn the real name of but I don't know, that detail just didn't really feel significant to me, like, it's not about her real name, it's like, her story, which, I mean, this book is about stories, all about each of ours, how we're all, we all have different tales, but in a way we are connected, whether that's like, a stone, like the Red Cliff Blue, or a house, or something, right, it's just the way we're connected, it's affects the story so yeah I did like that element but yeah <laughs> overall because of my general like feeling towards this book yeah these are and I'm still getting on Holland unfortunately I do want uh one read more by Kate Morton I am intrigued by I believe it's called The Homecoming which is like I think one of her latest books if not her latest so that's it for this vlog. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below telling me if you've read The Clockmaker's Daughter and what you thought of it. If you want to, please subscribe to this channel. And if you want to follow me on any social media, then all those links are in the down bar below. I'll see you guys next time I post a video.